excerpt from Blee's Paradox, chapter 37, Temptation. Breezy lay on the hospital bed, sweating profusely. Skriller stood at the foot of the bed. Orby was in the corner of the room, shackles around his wrists and ankles, but he wasn't chained to the wall. Look at you now, Skriller mocked. Breezy pulled a mirror from his pocket and tossed it to Orby. Tears welled up in his one good eye. No, please, Orby pleaded as he glanced at the mirror. Look into the mirror, Orby, Breezy coaxed. Fuck you, Skriller yelled. His tongue slithered in and out of his scaly mouth. Orby lifted the mirror and stared at his reflection with his one good eye. The other was sewn shut. Fog filled the mirror. Once it dissipated, a scene unfolded. A young Orby was in a conference room with his mother, Principal Mowler, and Dr. Cornelius. Dr. Cornelius was the oldest in the room, but didn't look it. The XYZs had been kind to her as she was kind to all she encountered. She loved children and tried to positively impact them the best she could. She was drawn to unfortunate misfits like Orby. We are afraid Orby has gotten worse since we last spoke. Mr. Mowler said to Orby's mother. We will soon be left with very few options, Dr. Cornelius added. And what are those options? Orby's mother asked. Not counting Orby, she was the least educated being in the room, and it made her not want to speak at all. Well, that is why we are here, this XYZ. If Orby refuses to talk to Dr. Cornelius again, this XY, we're going to have to expel him from this school, said Mr. Mowler. No, you can't, Orby shouted. We can't have students openly disobeying teachers in the classroom. Every XY, Mr. Mowler sternly replied. He's right, Orby. All you have to do is come to my office and talk to me. Please, Orby. Dr. Cornelius extended her hand across the conference room table towards Orby. I want to graduate with my friends, Orby said, looking down at the part of the table directly in front of him. Too ashamed to even look at them, you coward, Skriller asked. He paced behind Orby, sniffing him, tongue slithering into the boy's ear. We want you to graduate with your friends, Orby, Dr. Cornelius replied. Orby's mother looked at him. What's wrong, Orby? Her amaranthine skin turned cerise. Her brown clothes turned white as she morphed into Nurse Nikki. What is wrong, she asked. She softly placed the back of her hand on his sweaty gray skin. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Skriller yelled, mocking her. He clenched his claws around her neck, pushed in her windpipe before throwing her against the wall like a doll. What's wrong? What's wrong? Skriller hissed. He dug his claws into her back, ripped and pulled at her. She tried to scream but couldn't breathe. Her face turned blue. Skriller bashed her skull in. What have you done? Breezy asked looking down on the lifeless body. Me? I didn't do anything. It was the boy. Skriller pointed to Orby, who stood with his back against the wall. Liar! Orby yelled. No, boy. You are the one living a lie. He is right, Orby, Breezy said. No! Fuck you both! Orby closed his eye and shook his head vehemently. There was a knock at the door. Orby and Skriller disappeared immediately. Breezy? You all right? Pam asked. 1XX, Breezy replied. He dragged Nikki's body under the bed. The blood blended in with the rest that had pooled on the floor. Breezy opened the door. Those blue eyes were there to meet him. Instantly, he was lost in them, all his problems gone. She blushed and froze his conscious mind. With a smile, hi, her voice was so comforting yet seductive. She knew who she was and the physical presence she brought to any room. Yet, it wasn't that. It was her bright blue eyes that swept him away every time. Why, hello, Breezy lifted her hand and gave it a kiss. Are you feeling any better, she asked, weightless. Only just now, Breezy replied, looking into her eyes again. When he gazed into her eyes, the only thing that mattered was her happiness. Everything else was white noise. What are you up to, this XY, Breezy asked, like everyone else deciding whether to stay or leave. No one is going to get hurt. Judge Malign showed everyone the Rusitary army that is headed here. They could be here any XX now. Do we have time for a quick interview? 
Breezy asked. I'm not sure. Not an XX to waste, then. Breezy smiled as he danced out of the room. Zren set up two cameras. What do you want me to ask you? Anything. Surprise me. You sure you don't want me to set you up for what you want to say? We don't have much time. Time is relative, Breezy smirked. Rolling, Zren said as he pointed to Pam. Hi, Pam Weaselby here with Breezy, she smiled, looking from the camera to the cloaked being sitting in a chair to her left. So, Breezy, what made you break out of Lockheed and fight the Rusitary? Why does any change occur? The universe craves it. Persistent, incessant change. This free-floating planet has undergone vast changes over its storied existence. Billions of XYZs, and unlike most planets, it doesn't revolve around one star. It floats through space, traveling from galaxy to galaxy, running into different planets which contain their own species. I must say that it's the most fascinating of all the planets I have ever been on. Interesting, Pam said, completely enamored watching Breezy speak. His eyes and body movements were intoxicating. What are your thoughts about the character Mert, the one that has captured the attention of so many children on this planet? I think Mert showed children that they have the power to question everything in the universe, as they should. It showed children that they matter, that they have a place on this free-floating planet that adults no longer have. Oh, how so many adults wallow in that feeling, chasing the good old XYs, trying to replicate them, not knowing they are trying to live in something that is dead. Their youth becomes a feeling that will never be obtained again. They go on living their entire lives, afraid of death, Having a book tell them, if they don't behave, they will go into a black abyss filled with torture. Mert showed the children a glimpse of what their future can look like that goes beyond that way of thinking, that anything is possible in this universe, that they are not to be contained by the limits of a steel desk. Their physical bodies can do anything they put their minds to. So you want children to live outside of the Othio Taurus? Is that what you are pushing for? Generation after generation, living under the teachings of one book that was written thousands of XYZ ago. Can you wrap your head around how much progress has been lost in that time? Where consumptions could be this XY if these teachings hadn't been ingrained in them before they even knew how to psychologically defend themselves? These kids don't stand a chance with the knowledge these advertisers possess now. They stick needles in their eyes and their temples, measuring brain waves through processes, learning new ways to get them to spend skin off their own back. That is very powerful, Pam said, as she contemplated what to say next. That is all I can give, Breezy said. He stood from the chair and walked over to the hospital bed to lie down. Little Orby sat in the living room, wearing nothing but his white and red underwear. The light box needle penetrated his temple as he watched Bat Boy beat up his arch nemesis HQ. She was a psychologist who went crazy and caused mayhem all over the city of Lansing. Orby's mother walked into the room crying. We have to go, sweetie, she said, turning off the light box. Why? That's my show, Orby protested. He leaned towards the light box to turn it back on. No, we have to go right now. Ready to go, ma'am? A Slombarian Rusitary soldier stood in the doorway leading to the hall. Yes, just grabbing my son, she said, picking Orby up. He wrapped his arms and legs around her and stuck his thumb in his mouth, never taking his eyes off the massive Rusitary soldier, the biggest being the five XYZ old boy had ever seen. Outside, there was a Rusitary patrol car. Inside was an older Creaticism, hands cuffed behind his back. On top of the car stood Bick. Do you know who he is, Orby? He asked, eyes glowing, a wide smile across his face. Breezy blinked. When his eyes opened, he was no longer himself. He stood, skin steaming, vermilion scales spreading across his face. Breezy jumped from the blackness on top of Jim. He stared at him with infinitely black eyes. Tell me what you fear. Breezy's body had swollen, vermilion scales spread from his face to his left arm. Tell me what you fear. Breezy roared again with a voice so deep it made everyone's vocal cords vibrate. Jim was lost in the stare, his face expressionless. I, I want to be remembered after I die. Breezy struggled to control his movements. His arms and legs flailed in random directions. His voice changed from its usual electronic tone to one of a deep roar. Why would someone want to remember you 
after your worthless life is over. Jim's inner voice sang through his eyes. Life's not fair. Temptation makes it hard with its convincing stare. Live once, die once, so to temptation do I dare. Temptation always lingering, whether good or bad, something always there. Life's not fair. Beware, live with care, pick and choose what to do. Temptation isn't rare. Near or far, light or dark, temptation will make its mark. Why are you here? Let me be. But can't you see that it's temptation that will set you free? Live once, die once, try anything once. Just remember, cause and effect, gotta have respect. Temptation, good or bad, temptation doesn't care whether you're happy or sad, alive or dead, just as long as you're there when temptation wants to be fed. The words shocked Breezy, enraged him even more. He threw Jim to the side and turned his anger towards Pam. Now, you tell me, is that any way to live? You want to say that's right? You want to stand there and tell me that's right? Tell me! Breezy's face was half gray, the other half covered in vermilion scales. You tell me it was right to spend skin on breast and lip implants. I see it on your scummy fucking face. You spent all of that skin to look the way you do, seducing everyone around you, batting those blue eyes. Breezy fell for it, or be too, but I won't. Breezy's long gray fingers morphed into Skriller's claw. He grabbed Pam by the throat. Let go of her, Michael yelled, grabbing Breezy's arm and pushing him away from Pam, who was too shocked to speak. Breezy's long eyes shrunk to two pupils, one black, the other without pigment. Let go of me, you worthless fuck. I'll fucking skin you alive, he yelled as he whipped Mike across the room like a doll. He lunged at Pam. You fucking bitch. Steve and his brother jumped in front of the raging beast. Let it go, mate. Critter yelled, joining the other two. Orby, stop, Michael yelled. Being called Orby froze the beast. For the first time in his blinding rage, he saw the fear in Pam's eyes and the hurt on her face. There was a crater of distance between the two of them now. She was on an island alone. As he stood there, he realized he would never be able to join her again. The truth punched him harder in the gut than Steve did. He fell on his back. I give, I give, Breezy pleaded. The cloaked being took a moment to gather his thoughts. Set me free, Skriller whispered, slithering his tongue into his ear. Breezy stood, cloaked in shame. Pam, I won't insult you with an apology for what just occurred. I hope to explain in time. I would never harm anyone. She didn't respond, only nodded, looking down at the floor. What the fuck was that? Steve asked still standing in a defensive stance, glaring at Breezy. I will explain, but first I must go out there and turn myself in. They will kill you, Michael said. That is a statement made from fear, one that I do not share with you, Breezy bowed. I thank you all for your understanding. We're going to go out there with you, Steve said. No, I go out alone. Breezy was so stern, it hushed any rebuttal Steve, his brother, or anyone else had. Go further. That is where you can all go, further, Breezy smiled. Go further for what, Michael asked, for Bleas. This, this is what you mean by going forward? Going out there to get shredded to pieces by the Rusitary? That is what you mean by going with the flow? Michael's voice shook with anger. It is exactly what I mean by going with the flow. Do you not think that I have suffered? I carry on nonetheless. Each XY I awake, I ask, why? Why am I still alive? I always find the answer in my next step. Going further and further. Where? No one knows. You're crazy, Steve yelled. Breezy smiled. Just another molecular product of my environment. He bowed again, turned, and walked out of the apartment building.